Well, first of all, thank you so much for uh, taking some time out to talk. Well, thank you for giving me this chance, Salman. If you could go back in time, yeah, and you had access both to Jinnah and Mahatma Gandhi, what kind of communication would you have built between the two? Mm, that's a great question. I, it is one of the uh, the, the saddest uh, mm, elements of our history that the Gandhi Jinnah partnership uh, didn't last very long. It started, you know, to begin with. Uh, Jinnah Sahib was only seven years younger than Gandhi. They were both from the Gujarati-speaking background. They both were barristers in London. Even Jinnah Sahib considered going to South Africa the way Gandhi had done. When Gandhi came from South Africa to India, Jinnah was one of those who welcomed him. For a few years, they worked very closely together. There was a conference in Gujarat that Gandhi organized, and he got Jinnah to preside over it. Then it didn't click. A number of reasons. Uh, we can't go into all that. But absolutely true that there should have been a Gandhi Jinnah partnership for the subcontinent. And as you also know, Gandhi did as his last bid. Maybe it was a little too late then, but I'm not so sure that it was too late. It was late, but not too late. Gandhi wanted Jinnah Sahib to be given the chance to be the Prime Minister of United India and to work for the defense of Muslim interests, if need be, work for Pakistan also if he wanted to, but for him to have the chance to, to be the Prime Minister of United India. But Mountbatten, the Viceroy, and Gandhi's close colleagues in the Congress absolutely blocked that move. It was never even put to Jinnasa. So uh, we can't now uh, reverse history. And certainly nobody should uh, think of the crazy idea of removing the the boundary, but I think that boundary can become uh, just a notional boundary, a re real political boundary, but it should not be a boundary between human hearts. Mm. So, do you think that that relationship, uh, did that symbolize the Hindu-Muslim relationship? Not necessarily, but to some extent it did. Now, there were many Hindus who said Gandhi was not a real Hindu, you know, they, they, that's how they attacked him. In fact, they called him a half-Muslim. But these were a minority. Uh, Gandhi did command the vast majority of the Hindus of India. Jinnah was not a, an orthodox Muslim. In outward symbols or rituals, many Muslims may have thought, well, is he a real Muslim or not? But he successfully persuaded the bulk of the Muslims of the subcontinent that their interests he was fighting for, he was protecting. Whatever the great overwhelming Hindu population might be, whatever the British might do, this man is protecting our rights. What potential for change do we have right now, knowing all this history? Uh, okay, so I think now that so we know that even a genuine Gandhi who gave his life because he wanted Muslims also to have rights, so we know that he. He was a defender of Muslim rights. And yet it was possible for many Muslims to say, well, maybe he's not. Maybe he's, uh, we should be careful of him. Jinnah, we know uh, during the riots that took place, how he protected the Hindus in Karachi. He cried when he saw the suffering of the Hindus of Pakistan. Incidentally, after Gandhi also, although he was sad, he accepted partition, but he, he said that, Except partition, but Pakistan is also my country. Jinnah Sahib kept his homes in India. He was the father of Pakistan, but he never said India is not my country. Jinnah and Gandhi were the only two people who regarded both India and Pakistan as their country. So when I talk to you, uh, Salman, I know that you may have another passport. But, I mean, your pain is my pain. Uh, when the uh, Pashtuns suffer, when the uh, others suffer in, in, in Balochistan or in Karachi or in Punjab or in Sindh, I feel the pain. Um, and the, so, we must enlarge the numbers of people uh, who have a new idea of who my people are. Are my people only the Hindus? Are only the Hindus? Who are my people? 
All the Pakistanis are also there. And uh, I'm sure you feel Indians are also here. Uh, so I think this is a good question for each of us to ask, who are my people? And if my people today don't include the whole of humanity, they don't include a section, let me keep enlarging that sex circle, make it bigger and bigger and bigger. So, this coalition, civilian coalition, which is an India, Pakistan, Afghan... Afghanistan, absolutely right. right. Yes, we must include Afghanistan. So, and the media is so powerful today, yeah, yeah. that if you had a collection of voices yes. of different generations, yeah. not just one generation, yes. would you be willing to be a part of such a coalition? Of course, absolutely. I don't know how many years of active life I have left to Salman, but I would... Nothing would give me greater pleasure than to be a part of such a coalition. Right. Yes, I, I can't sing, but I can, <laughs> I can stand on a platform and say this is what we need. How do you think democracy and theology can answer the questions of the 21st century? Yeah, okay, fair, fair enough. Well, uh, let's take democracy first. Uh, I don't think in this day and age, in this 21st century, any people will tolerate or any people should tolerate only an elite or a, some part of society uh, telling everybody else what to do. The people must decide themselves their life, their future. So democracy makes sense. Not only does it make sense, uh, the, the spirit of our times is such that the people will look only tolerate democracy. Of course, sometimes democracy throws up people who are corrupt. Often it does that. So we have to find some solutions for that. But nobody can quarrel with the absolute necessity of democracy. Now, as far as theology or religion is concerned, um, you know, some people say, oh, religion creates so much dissension, and so much, especially in the Western world do say that, in fact, religion is the cause of our problem. Um, but that is not, in my opinion, at all the right, right attitude. Yes, uh, ambitious people, greedy people have misused religion, and given religion a bad name in many places. Um, but human beings, all of us, we need something to give us direction, something to restrain us something also to inspire us, to put us on fire to do something great. And religion understood in the right way can sometimes do that. Mm -hmm. The idea of the Almighty, the idea of uh, the conscience, uh, the idea of truth. Uh, so religion or spirituality understood in the deepest sense has produced some of the greatest wonders, positive wonders of the world. So, uh, I think we have to salvage religion from the fanatics, from the extremists, from the fundamentalists uh, who don't want people to love each other, they want people to hate each other. So, if we can restore religion to its real role, which is to make people love each other, rather than to make people hate each other, that is the day when our world will change. So. Mahatma Gandhi galvanized a people's movement yeah. through symbols which came from uh, Hinduism, uh, uh, Satyagara Ahimsa. So why do you think he used those symbols to begin with? Uh, first of all, let me say that some of his symbols seem to have a Hindu form, or at least the words sounded to be Hindu words or Sanskrit words like Satyagra, but Satyagra means Firmness for truth. Now, firmness for truth is not a Hindu idea. It's an Islamic idea, it's a Christian idea, it's, etc. Uh, similarly, Ahimsa is, it means non-violence. However, it's undoubtedly true that Gandhi uh, sometimes referred to, you know, the Hindus called the almighty Rama or Krishna, and Gandhi used those phrases. He was, he was a Hindu, he was uh, never shy of saying that. Mm. But let us look at the symbols of Gandhi's struggles. Salt. Uh, taxes, land, spinning wheel. Mm -hmm. These are not religious symbols. Mm -hmm. These are everyday secular symbols mm -hmm. too. So Gandhi 
used both secular symbols and you might say religious symbols but he never used any symbol religious or secular to divide Hindus from Muslims he wanted to bring himself closer to the Hindus in order to bring the Hindus closer to the Muslims he was committed to Hindu Muslim brotherhood he knew that many other Hindus were opposed to it he wanted to grab the Hindu plot platform so that Hindus as a whole would come closer to the Muslims. That is Gandhi's strategy. To a large extent he succeeded, uh, to a significant extent he failed. Why did he fail? Because the Hindu extremists also continuing to mount their campaign. They presented Gandhi as some kind of appeaser of Muslims. Similarly, Muslim extremists continue to paint Gandhi as a very wily Hindu. He is talking like this, but his aim is Hindu domination. So the Hindu extremists and the Muslim extremists also captured some space, but the bulk of the space in India was indeed captured by Gandhi. If you were to take a Gandhian model today, yeah. how would you go about the, the modes of communication? That's a great point, and I would say that uh, just as Gandhi felt free uh, to invent or create his symbols, we should also feel free to create our own symbols. Um, and uh, I think those who want to see partnerships for the sake of prosperity, for the sake of, you know, Pakistan and India, uh, we, in Afghanistan, Bangladesh, uh, we are meant to, to give a good life to all our hundreds of millions of children, uh, if possible even to show some kind of example to the world, if possible to send some great people to other parts of the world to, to do some useful things, to get good jobs for themselves, but also to help the society. So my vision of what India and Pakistan can do in the future is a very large vision. God only knows whether it's possible to realize it. To achieve it, to fulfill it, uh, we need to have the best minds of the greatest thinkers, or the creative artists. Mm -hmm. That's why Salman, if I may say so, talking with you is very uh, heartening to me because you have this amazing commitment and you have this great creative gift. Uh, I'm not referring only to your medical gifts but above all your, your artistic and musical gifts. Uh, I think that music today has a very powerful role in bringing people together. Perhaps the largest single uh, or the most influential weapon in this war is, is, is music. And I would join to it now because speeches are relatively easy to make, books are also not that difficult to write. But inspired music, inspired poetry, inspired film, inspired drama, that is what is needed. Uh, and here's a question back to you again about communication. Music is a vehicle, great vehicle for mm -hmm. communication. But there are uh, uh, legitimate grievances of people. That's why one of the, some of our biggest conflicts are unresolved. Okay. How can civil society take the lead role in putting pressure on the state and the security services? Once the public in both countries becomes aware yeah. that there is a great peace constituency in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. the public will put pressure on the politicians also. And there is a generational thing. Shift is already taking place. Mm -hmm. I would also like uh, Indians uh, who have achieved something in their lives, who are people of, uh, uh, of, of real standing, who can be honored and loved and respected, mm. such people to visit Pakistan, mm. to be interviewed on the television and the press, so that the people of Pakistan may know that there are some really fine people in India who love Pakistan, who want Pakistan to flourish, to succeed, uh, I want such people to go. Similarly, I want people like you and others in Pakistan to come as often as possible to India. And of course, we will also need um, allies in the political world, the media world. Um, people think that politicians are only there to make money or to get their children and grandchildren into high office. Mm -hmm. But that need not be the case. Why should there not be? Why shouldn't some people emerge? who are lucky enough to be in some kind of political office who say, wait a minute, I've now got here. I want to be different from the other politicians. I want the future to remember me. Mm -hmm. And yes, I may 
not win the next election. Yes, I may even get killed. But before that, I must do something really substantial, not for my good, but for... So that is also possible. So we must never give up on these politicians, challenge them, and maybe one or two of them will respond to the biggest challenge.
对着。